today we're going to talk about Wallboard FX uh, version 4.1, which we're making available. I'll just take you through uh, some of the functionality that we've added. Um, quick rundown, um, we'll do a little bit on house rules, a little refresher on uh, who Unified FX are. Um, I'm going to do a recap um, on the features that we've added in previous versions, just in case people are not familiar with it, um, either with the product or maybe even if you do have our software. It's a, a handy refresher for some things that we've added in the last few years. Um, then in terms of uh, what's new in this release, version 4.1, uh, we've got some additional Q and agent stats. Uh, so there's some extra data we can now retrieve uh, from the Finesse API that allows us to add that into the platform. Then uh, there's a new threshold audio alert feature. So uh, that's been requested there for quite a little while. So it's good to finally get that one uh, delivered. And uh, the last kind of point, just a very brief thing really, is that we've added in HPS support. Um, I'll also just give a quick reminder about some relevant functionality that I've added into new version 7, and 7.1 is coming out soon. I'll tell you a little bit about that as well, uh, because we've got UCCX agent support, as well as the ability to run virtual UCCX agents. So it does kind of complement um, your contact center very well with the latest version of PhoneView. Uh, in terms of house rules, it's really quite simple. Uh, just please remember, if you do have any questions, to use the Q&A panel. Um, just because uh, I'm very bad at talking and typing at the same time. Uh, so uh, we'll probably miss things. Uh, so we've got a few people on here that can answer. If you just make sure you send your question to all panelists, then uh, somebody else might be able to jump in with a reply. And uh, again, the session is being recorded. Um, you can email sales at unifiedfx.com after the session, and we'll, we'll get the recording to you once it's ready. Uh, in terms of Unified FX itself, uh, we've got three main products, which you know, maybe a few of you will be familiar with, but just a quick recap. Uh, so we've got PhoneView, which is our endpoint management software, uh, definitely uh, the best of uh, breeds that uh, is used quite literally to manage millions of uh, Cisco phones out there. Again, that's always moving forward, and uh, we'll get an update on that later in the month as well. Uh, I'll cover some of the future events near the end of the presentation, just as a reminder. What else we've got coming up. Uh, Wallboard itself, um, if you're not familiar with it, it's a very simple self-installation application. Uh, it's completely self-contained. It's 100% browser-based. There's no need for third-party components or plugins, so it's nice and simple to deploy and administer. Um, but an important point, at least to some people, is how fast it is. Um, we're using protocols and integra integrations with UCCX that most other wallboard systems uh, don't use that allows uh, near immediate uh, response times when events happen in your contact center. And I'll maybe talk about that in a little bit more detail uh, shortly. Uh, we also have migration effects. That's something that we built on request of Cisco, uh, which makes it incredibly simple to replace old Cisco phones for new. That's something that's going to be even more Topical moving forward when we get to Communication Manager 14 uh, earlier this year, uh, as there's a lot more phone deprecation that Cisco are kind of forcing on everybody, or whichever way you want to put it. Um, so that, that's something you can kind of reach out to us about if you want to find out a bit more about how simple that's, that's been made. Okay, so just a quick recap on the features that we added back in version 3. Um, so there was, again, some more statistics that we added uh, in terms of band and call, uh, uh, band and calls from the queue, some new agent statistics, reason code, that was something that we got asked uh, quite a lot for in time and state, we were able to add them back then. Uh, we also added a new um, kind of agent view update where you could select individual agents, so rather than just seeing all agents within a particular queue, you could choose which particular agents you want to see. Uh, we also made it possible to embed our wallboard display inside Finesse as a gadget, so you can deploy it in other ways. Uh, with that, there's ways to restrict um, what someone can see within that Finesse gadget, you know, a particular display layout, et cetera. Uh, you can also customize the, the theming, which is the kind of main background image, just you know, to personalize it or maybe put some graphics of your own with your logos in there. Um, something that we never really had easy to do in the past was to recover your password if you forgot it. Uh, so that's something that we made a, a 
process for so it's a little bit easier you can recover your password if need be um copying displays uh the first version of the software you had to kind of recreate a display from scratch so we just made the administration a bit simpler by making that copyable and uh again on request from customers um our original agent based view is like a a card with a status for each agent which is nice and visual uh, however not everybody wanted that type of layout some were just more comfortable with a, a tabular format so we introduced a way to flip between a kind of card based view and a table based view uh, in terms of 4.0, this is more of an architectural update. Um, in preparation for uh, Cisco compatibility, uh, we did a couple of things, but primarily it was based around a complete rewrite from the ground up of the integration that we perform between our application and UCCX. Uh, Wadi use a, a really powerful mechanism using CTI, that's why it's so fast. But you know, we had some niggles in there that we had to iron out. So we decided to do a, a rewrite. And when we did that, it gave us up a few opportunities. Uh, one of them was to actually emulate a UCCX system, which made our testing uh, a lot better, as well as the ability to support high availability. So if you got a high availability pair in UCCX, you can now use that with our software back when we added the uh, version four. And Finally, and I'll talk about this more in a second, um, we introduced uh, a second data feed. Uh, so let me go to that slide. So previously, all we actually had was CTI event data. Now, there's a pro and con to that. The pro is how fast the data feed is. Uh, you literally cannot, cannot get any faster within milliseconds of an agent changing state our wallboard was able to show you that state change and certain counters, etc., could be updated uh, accordingly. But the coin on that is the fact that we'll get a limited set of data that that CTI API exposes. Uh, so it's kind of like a, it's probably about eighty percent of the data that uh, the UCCX platform makes available. But technically speaking, we had to kind of dip into the finesse API to be able to get a few extra parameters. So what we did uh, initially with 4.0 is we did a, a, a dual data feed. So we'll get the existing data feed from the CTI events, and we have a polling operation from the Finesse uh, API. So we combine the data from both of those, and we mix that data together. The most recent you know, ent uh, data entry wins, and uh, we'll get a kind of periodic synchronization every 20 seconds in terms of the agent stats. So effectively you get the best of both worlds because you're getting immediate uh, event notifications through, right? But sometimes our internal counters could get out of sync, you know, maybe um, certain event states get missed or something like that, for example, you know, the system, our system was offline for a little while or your system was offline, um, then uh, data might get out of sync. But because we have the finesse data to work with it, we can automatically realign the data. So uh, you know, the main point is uh, you get the benefit of both fairly fast data and uh, consistent data through that realignment um, by the S API. Uh, now, <clears throat> the thing is that it means that you know, initially we were really just doing that to kind of align the CTI data that we had already but it opened up the opportunity to pull in additional data that's finesse-only data, basically, not available via the CTI uh, event data. And that's really this 4.1 release is based around. So we've got some new um, you know, parameters, et cetera, that we'll be able to pull and add within the wall board. Just from what you view, that you can view. So the first two things that we've been able to add via the finesse data feed is uh, additional queue stats. So the first one is call answer rate. So that's just something that's calculated on UCCX based on the number of handled calls within a queue against on top of the total calls as a percentage. Um, within the screenshot on the right hand side there just shows you inside the Wallboard FX admin interface, there's a kind of drop down list of the parameters you can add um, within a queue. And there's basically two extra ones on the bottom, so call answer rate. The second one that was added, uh, which had been asked for a long, long time, and it was kind of frustrating that uh, it's taking this long to be able to deliver it, 
uh, is SLA percentage. Uh, this is because it just wasn't available in the CTI data feed, and it was only available via the Finesse API, and it took us a while to obviously sync up all that data, which we did in 4.0. So now in this update, we can finally expose that SLA percentage data. Um, the screenshot at the bottom center, that's just showing you within the UCCX admin interface where you actually set that service level. So it basically means that uh, if a call is handled within 15 seconds, if the value is 15, it gets a positive result within the SLA, but if it takes longer than 15 seconds for that call to be answered, it gets uh, counted against uh, negatively against the SLA. So if you've got an SLA of 90%, for example, and that's what you can track and you can set a threshold on it in Wallboard. You can see in real time as calls come in and out, if uh, the tally <coughs> kind of goes up the way or down the way for the number of calls that have been able to be answered within that service level number. So again, it's quite a, a common feature in Wallboards, obviously, and it's been something that's been quite fundamentally missing in ours for a little while because the data wasn't there. So finally, it's good to be able to add it. The next set of stats that we've been able to pull in because of the extra finesse data feed is uh, listed here. So basically, uh, we've got five extra parameters: we've got hold, uh, total hold time, average and longest hold duration, uh, average speed of answer, and log on duration. So again, in terms of a supervisor wanting to, you know, manage, maintain, and monitor another agent activity, uh, that just gives you more. Kind of visibility in terms of the activity or a per agent level of what they're up to. Uh, two screenshots here. The right hand one is showing you the admin interface with the drop down list of choices of the parameters you can make visible within the, the wallboard display. It's basically, those five extra ones have been added to that list at the bottom, so you can choose any one of those as well. Uh, the kind of center graphic there, this is the card based view. Obviously, it's a bit of one tabular view as well, but it's, it looks a bit nice on the card view. And you can see in this sample, it's got things like log on duration, total hold time, longest hold duration, etc. So there's kind of three key stats um, that you can use to get an idea of you know the type of activity uh, that that age is performing. Now, because it uses the Finesse API to get these extra data feeds, technically it requires UCCX 10.5 or above basically with finesse enabled. That means either, you know, U6 11 and above, because that's all finesse enabled, you know, it's always enabled because that's uh, when Cisco made that transition to finesse. Um, but if you're for some reason still on an older version of UCX and it's 10.5, um, and you have not transitioned to finesse yet from our software's point of view, you would need to um, be on a finesse enabled uh, version of uh, UCCX. Now, the good thing is you can still use our software um, without these extra parameters because we can, the UCCX CTI connection uh, goes all the way back to literally all the very first versions of UCCX. So that works all the way through, including all the latest versions. So that's consistent on any version of UCCX, basically. It's just for these extra parameters that will only become available if you're on a finesse enabled um, CX instance, basically. And the next feature uh, to describe is the threshold audio alert. So this, again, something that's been asked for for quite a long time, but like the SLA feature. And uh, this is pretty simple in some respects, uh, but all we've really done is on the admin interface, and I'll do a little demonstration for you is uh, just give you the ability to upload a, an MP3 file. Uh, at this point in time, we only support MP3 files, so we're just kind of telling the browser directly to, to use that file, so we're not doing any clever audio conversion or anything like that, so it'd be kind of your task to, to get an MP3 format if your audio source you want to use isn't already in that format. Maybe in the future we'll do some conversions for you, but for now, it requires MP3 format. And just kind of click on that little upload uh, choice there. You get a, a file browser will open and you tell it your MP3 file and uh, upload it. Uh, they will be saved on the Wallboard server. So from that point onwards, anybody else can use that MP3 file as well. Uh, it's set on a per display level. Um, 
just if you're not familiar, a display is basically a layout. So you can have um, as many display layouts as you want, and you can have one with one queue, another one with two queues, another one with uh, you know <clears throat> three queues in different orders and things like that. And uh, depending on the teams that you want to expose that display to, and on each of those individual display layouts, you can choose a different audio alert, basically, or disable it as well. So maybe only one particular layout has an audio alert, the other ones are silent effectively and just uh, visual if you want that to be the case. Uh, so that's just a, a screen grab of what the admin interface uh, looks like. Um, in terms of the actual uh, audio file itself, uh, the way it works at the moment will basically play for 20 seconds. It's also capped to 20 seconds, so if you upload a file that's longer than 20 seconds, you won't get the whole thing played. So uh, it is something you can um, change you need to kind of contact us with. We'll give you instructions how to change it. But we felt as though that's a, a good kind of typical value to, to work with. And uh, the last kind of enhancement to, to kind of talk about is the HTTPS support. Uh, now, a pro and con about our rollboards uh, or the way we've built a rollboard application is it has quite literally zero dependencies. You could class .NET Framework as a dependency, which it obviously uses. Uh, however, that's built into um, all the latest versions of Windows anyway, so it's a, a kind of native component now. Um, but other than that, uh, there's nothing else required. There's no need for a web server because we have our own web server built in. So the good thing is, you don't need to install IIS or Apache or anything because we have our own web server. However, the downside is it's up to us to enable certain features and functions within that web server that we've built. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so it's just taking a little bit of time to get around to it, but we finally uh, enabled HTTPS support uh, within there. So uh, the built-in web server, you can now apply your own internal or public certificate to it, which obviously will then encrypt the traffic uh, to and from the wallboard display. Uh, I'm not really going to publish instructions here because I'm kind of quite detailed because um, obviously certificates are a little bit tricky at the, the best of times. There's no kind of GUI way of uploading them right now. You have to follow a few specific steps. So the best thing to do if you want to enable HPS on your wallboard is just contact us at supportunifiedfx.com and we'll do a WebEx session and, and help you get you up and running with it. Um, now, before I kind of jump into the demonstration side of it, I wanted to just recap on some of the UCCX relevant capability that we've added to Phone View version 7. And in particular, uh, there's, there's two things that we've done. Uh, one thing is UCCX agent support. And what that means is quite a, quite a lot of content on this slide actually so maybe give you time to kind of read and digest it as well but I'll, and I'll maybe just talk you through it um, because it's quite unique and uh, quite powerful but effectively um, within our phone view application you can integrate it with your UCCX system and it will pull some UCCX related data so that's things like for the physical phone or the soft phone can then map out and show you for that device the agent ID, the IPCC extension, and a real time view of the agent state. That's using that same CTI feed. It's using the same code technically that uh, Wallboard uses. And that means that uh, it's, you know, again, a Cisco compatible tested integration, uh, et cetera. The, Stats uh, are also available, or the status rather is also available real time. So inside point view, there's a kind of summary panel, and you can use it to filter as well as show you kind of summary numbers. Um, that is all updated in real time for those agent states. So it's a nice simple way to actually just get an instant view of um, you know who's logged in, ready, not ready, etc. Uh, from phone view itself, if you want to, you can actually log agents in and out. Now, because of the way UCCX works, it's not as though you can log in with a different account to that agent. It has to be the actual agent's user ID and their password. Um, so it's not really for 
uh, how can I describe it? It's not really for an end user's agent account. It's usually for like a test agent that you might want to log in so you can have an extra agent within a queue that you want to set ready, not ready, you know, and validate if a call uh, gets sent to a particular agent, et cetera, based on their queue and skill levels, et cetera. So it's usually like a test agent or something you'd use that with. Uh, again, because the library that we use is the same one that Wallboard has, it also supports UCCX high availability as well. Uh, it doesn't just have the ability to view state, it can also set state as well. So you can, uh, even if it's a, a real agent as such, you can actually change the state of the real agent. So you, so you could have a test agent logged in locally and go ready, not ready, et cetera. But even if it's a, a real agent with a real person um, using their system, you can actually, in a mini supervisor format, you can actually set that agent ready, not ready as well. Whether you're doing testing or you you know you want to chase them up to make sure they're, uh, they're available for taking calls. And the other point at the bottom there is the way we've built it. It also works with multiple UCX systems, stroke UCM clusters at the same time. So it's not tied to any one cluster. So if you've got a larger environment or test environments, multiple of them, uh, you can do it all within a single instance of, of phone view as well. So that's one side of the UCX kind of functionality that we've added. So it's the kind of agent state side of it. And the other part of it is based on another new feature that we added into PhoneView version 7, which is basically virtual endpoints. So uh, with a virtual endpoint uh, within PhoneView, we can basically take Java, or we've taken Java, the, the soft phone client, and we've embedded it inside PhoneView. So PhoneView is no longer just a remote control tool. Um, it also is a soft phone as well. It's a little bit more than that because it's multiple soft phones simultaneously. And that means that if you want to, you can register, say, for example, 10 um, Jabber endpoints and bring them online all completely within one application. No need for multiple PCs, agents, etc., or people, all within one application on one PC. You can bring uh, a number of devices online. If you go a little bit further with just bringing endpoints online, if you configure them as UCCX agents, then you can go beyond being just a virtually uh, a virtual endpoint and be a virtual UCCX agent. So it kind of complements the information on the previous slide that was talking about, you know, logging in as an agent and managing state, etc. So it means that I could quite literally set up an entire contact center from an endpoint perspective in one application because I can set up the software for the endpoints, I can set up the actual um, agent states, I can put calls into the queue, I can see them route through to the appropriate agent, ready not ready to uh, accept the call, um, hold transfer, you know, do all those common functions, etc. So really good for testing, let's put it that way. Okay, so that's the kind of, uh, oh, it's a third component which I forgot about. Uh, I suppose if you combine agent support, virtual agents, then this is a quick summary of the types of scenarios you can use that functionality for. So you can basically, you know, validate test you set scripts, make sure your routing uh, works as expected, uh, check if you've got queue overflows, maybe check that if your supervisor does certain actions that they're doing what you expect them to. Uh, you can technically even test uh, UCCX monitoring recording systems because they're real Jabber devices, you know, they support uh, supervision and monitoring recording actions. Um, and the key thing is there's no need for multiple PCs or people. You can only do it in one application, one person. Um, okay, so moving forward, what I may actually do, I may leave the demo to pretty much the very end. I've got a little, little bit I want to talk about first. So if I move forward, uh, I just want a quick recap before I jump into the demo because I'll forget otherwise uh, of just some of the other events that we've got um, this year so far. Now, there's other things that will probably happen and some of them are kind of still to be confirmed. But just to give you a rough outline for the year, uh, so uh, later uh, on the 14th of January, we brought Fort View 7.1, one of the main additions that we've added in 7. 
point one is this automation FX SDK. We've got it as an exclusive preview, so it's still to be finalized. So we've got a kind of preview um, version of it that we can give out to people to uh, understand and play around with. And then at the end of January, there's Cisco Live in Europe. So we'll be there and we'll stand. And if you're lucky enough to attend, just stop by and say hello and show you whatever we're available you're interested in. Uh, then we are reckon right about March, April time, but still to be confirmed, there's going to be the uh, communication manager 14 uh, partner VT in San Jose. So we're certainly intending to attend it, uh, but we've still for the wait for the details to come through, but that's usually when it happens. So that's what's been earmarked for. Uh, then uh, more concrete, we're definitely going to Cisco Live. Yes, it's all booked up, etc. We've got a stand all sorted. Uh, so that's kind of end of May, start of June. So again, if you go in there, uh, let us know. Uh, and then what we're currently targeting, although quite a fluid date at the moment, so there's a lot of work to do, is uh, to basically take the Automation FX SDK uh, that we've been working on and Basically, that will be the initial release of it. You know, it's penciled in for October at the moment, but uh, if we can bring it out sooner, we will. Uh, there will certainly be previews, you know, or early beta's uh, of the later iterations available before then. But that that's kind of kind of plan. But you'll still be able to try out and use it um, later this month in version seven point one. But there's quite a lot of extra stuff that we need to add in. Uh, before we get to the, the full release, so there'll be quite a big change between the two. So that's why we have to do it in those two stages. Okay, so that was it in terms of the slide content. So I'll just jump to the demo and uh, and we'll field any outstanding questions uh, at the end. So bear with me a second. Let's see if that's coming through. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I've got Lowered open. I've really just got a nice simple display, not done it too sophisticated today. I don't really have time, unfortunately. Uh, so I've really just got one agent available and I've just got one queue I'm playing around with. So nothing very interesting, unfortunately. But if I go to the admin interface, uh, the key addition is this threshold audio alert parameter. I've already got it enabled, but I'll just expand it to show you. So you would just go and click the, <coughs> excuse me, upload. And then browse your system, uh, choose the file that you want, and uh, upload it to the Lowboard uh, system. Uh, and then choose the particular sound that you want. You can you know enable and disable at any point if it's annoying people. As as you'll hear this one in a second, you'll probably find it quite annoying. Um, so uh, let's hope I've saved this properly. Let me just uh, refresh that. Um, and with that uh, alert turned on. If I go back to the wallboard display, now I've got a threshold set. I'll show you how to set that up in a little minute, actually, but I'll just show you in action first. But calls in queue for the support uh, queue in our case, I've set that with a threshold uh, that will build up to the value of three. Okay, so what I'm going to do on my other system, which you can't see right now, is I'm going to start placing some calls in. So let's put my first call in. So we should see in a little second. There we are. So it's got calls in queue one. We can see the color kind of building up uh, against that threshold. So it's going to climb towards three. We do the second call. So we can see that coming in there. And then if we do the third call, this is where I need to get ready with my audio controls actually, because this is going to get quite noisy assuming it kicks in the way it did earlier. So I click call on that one. Yeah, hang that up quickly. Kick off not a second. There we are. I don't know if there's any Star Trek fans <laughs> here, but uh, you might recognise that particular uh, audio alert. That's uh, I think there's Klingons on the starboard at the moment. Uh, so uh, that's really it, I guess, in some respects. So I'll show you how to set the thresholds up, but effectively, when it hits that red portion, the the full a breach of the, the threshold, that's when the audio gets played in the browser session. Um, it's basically limited to 20 seconds. Uh, if the threshold goes back down the way, the audio will stop, um, but uh, but it is capped at 20 seconds at, at the moment. You know, maybe something you want to change for your own environment. You can 
options about how to do that if need be. Right, so let me show you how thresholds work, just in case you're not familiar. Go back to the admin interface. And the way that our admin interface represents um, display as such uh, with its layout is you've got these regions, as we call them. So in this case, there's a cube region at the top panel and an agent region at the bottom panel. So the top part was where the table was. And you can see there's the kind of preview of the layout here and an example of it. And I've got support and calls and queues. So that's showing you the design of it. And if I click edit, I can change the order of the columns, which particular parameters should be in there and which queues you should have, etc. But in this case, if you look at the top right corner, the threshold options. So if I click on thresholds, then uh, we've got a set of tabs here. So those tabs represent the queues, which from a table perspective represent the rows. So I don't have any set up. I've only got one, and that was inside the support queue. So if I click on that support tab, you can now see threshold configuration here. Now, I've only got one threshold, and in this case, think of it like x, y coordinates. My y coordinate is support, and my x coordinate is calls in queue. If I wanted to add another threshold, like so, I would then choose the other column effectively within the support row uh, that I wanted to add the threshold to. I'll just cancel that for now. Then once you add in uh, your particular cell coordinates, so that's your back center queue, and that's the parameter you want the threshold on. Once you add it in, uh, you get this entry here, and it will have a set of val three different values. This one's nice and simple. I've just got one, two, three. You can just edit inside that cell and then at the bottom, <coughs> I can change then. It'll be a save button at the bottom if you make a change. Um, and that's the color that it's going to display for each of those numbers. It's also a time based um, threshold, so you can change the validity of time range. There's a save available now. Uh, time range that that threshold is uh, going to kick in. So if you want to, you can actually set multiple thresholds for the same parameter that will kick in at different levels to different times of the day. You know, so maybe you've got a busy period and you've got extra staff in uh, in the morning and you actually want your SLA numbers to, uh, to be a little bit tighter because you've got more resources. Uh, you could do that, and then maybe in uh, later on you can change that. You know, maybe there's like day shifts, night shifts, and different SLAs to go with that, uh, so you can modify the thresholds accordingly. <clears throat> so that's really how you set thresholds up. Uh, I think that's largely it from a, a demonstration point of view. So I think what we'll do, I, I'll maybe see what the questions are like. And I can demonstrate a little bit of phone view as well with the, the use sex agent feature. Wasn't really going to do it, to be honest, because uh, I've got some audio quality issues on my setup. But uh, I'll maybe just check the questions there and see if there's any. Uh, oh, it says my audio is fading in a little bit. Hopefully, it's been clear enough for you. Um, and the copy recording. It looks like there's no technical questions I can see. Oh no, wait a minute, something up the chat which I missed. Uh, maybe an answer by Mohammed looks but I'll read it out just in case uh, I wouldn't see it. So asking about uh, compatibility with UCC E, great question. Uh, we get that quite a lot. Uh, so when we originally built the Bobo FX, we built it primarily for UCC X. We actually did a little trick where it could work with the native queues and call manager, but we kind of ditched that uh, early on. It didn't really kind of wasn't functional enough, to be absolutely honest. Uh, so we focused on UCCX because you know it's a big chunk of the market. It's nice and easy and simple to kind of work with, um, and very uh, good complement to the feature set that we have in Wallboard. Um, but we do regularly get asked about UCC support. So the good news is because I'll jump back to the presentation. One second. Here. Um, so, because we had to integrate with the Finesse API, which is technically quite simple, um, that is given us that extra data that we're able to add in this version. Uh, but because now started to do that, technically UCCE has the exact same API. 
So uh, also CTI as well, but it's quite a different version. So adding support for that's a, a different challenge. But what we might do is we might update our integration so that it can work just purely with finesse data. Once we do that, then in theory, we should be able to uh, move forward with uh, UCCE support. So it's something that uh, we've been playing around with uh, in the background, but we don't really done anything significant with. But now we're kind of across the line that we have, we should be able to start work on that. But again, it's something that we don't really have an ETA for, but uh, I would hope that it's something that we could get together this year. And uh, a couple of clients that we used to eat that were kind of willing to test it. So we'll see how that kind of works out with them. Uh, any other questions? Some of the bit wise, but I think that's uh, fixed. Okay, well, I, I think that'll do for uh, today. So I appreciate everybody's time and uh, just contact the sales at unifiedfx.com for any kind of follow up questions and uh, copy the recording. Yeah, thank you.